From their therapsid origins, we're now ready to survey the mammals. Looking at our evolutionary innovations, the next key step is that once we've left the water, we're exposed to much more extreme temperatures, and the mammals evolved endothermy, that is, the capacity to keep themselves warm from their own metabolism. Before this, there were forms of dinosaurs that could be active at night because they were insulated with those feathers, very rudimentary feathers, but it's the mammals who truly seize the night. When we look at the mammals, there's three key things about them that we need to know. The first is that they're covered in hair. This provides a very effective form of insulation, which allows them to maintain their body heat even though they're active in the coolest times of night. They also have very complex teeth. Reptilian teeth are simple pegs, but mammalian teeth are much more complicated, allowing a much more complex diet. But the key characteristic of mammals, that which defines us as a group, is that the females secrete milk. Females have mammy. That's where the word mammal comes from. The first fossil mammals that we see was a very small creature with that unpronounceable name down there, Megazostrodon, which is only about five inches long. From this, we have three main groups of modern mammals. On the right, we have the monotremes, very few species alive today, then the marsupials, and then the placentals, also known as the eutherians. I want to start with the monotremes. These are a really peculiar group of mammals in that they lay eggs. Two of the species are portrayed here, the echidna, a spiny anteater, and it's covered with hair, and some of the hair is modified into spines, but the females lay eggs. So does the platypus lay eggs. But both species are mammals because not only are they covered in hair, but the females secrete milk. So the platypus is almost like a perfect transitional form between a therapsid-type reptile to a modern mammal. They have poisonous spines on their hind legs, which can produce poison, just like a snake. They also lay eggs, just like a bird or any other reptile. But key, they're mammals, the females lactate. Here's the other more common modern monotreme, a really bizarre looking thing called the long-snouted echidna. Now this group is called monotremes. That means they have a cloaca. They just have one tract through which they urinate, they defecate, and they lay eggs. This is just like reptiles and birds. And even more bizarre is that the male has a four-headed penis, which is a form of reproductive organ in the male that's very much like found in reptiles. So nevertheless, even though they have these clear reptilian traits, they're still covered with hair, the females secrete milk, so they are proper mammals. Again, looking at these modern groups, the next large classification is derived from the fact that we have live-bearing young. Only the monotremes lay eggs. All the other mammals have live-bearing females, so they give birth to a baby rather than to an egg. And the first group we want to look at here are the marsupials. The marsupials may be mostly familiar to us as roadkills in the Midwest, possums, but there's a wide diversity of marsupials. Here's our American possum, the only species that we have left in North America. But in Australia, we've seen this broad diversity of marsupial species. So they also have possums, brush-tailed possums, but koala bears are actually marsupials, Tasmanian devils, are marsupials and so is the wombat. And how we know they're all marsupials is if we look very closely at the reproductive system. So here's a much more familiar Australian marsupial, the kangaroo, and you see that the mother has a pouch where her child or her joey is kept during much of the time. What happens is that her reproductive tract is back here and she gives birth to a very small embryo who finds its own way, it crawls blindly through the fur until it finds its way into the pouch. And once it's inside the pouch, it attaches itself to a teat and then nurses there and completes its early physical development. So they give birth to a very, to, compared to other mammals, a very immature embryonic form which has to complete its physical development in her pouch. Now, this 
fossil, strange thing here with another unpronounceable name, has recently been discovered in China, and this is the first eutherian or placental mammal. It dates from 125 million years ago, so these things were around for 60 million years before Tyrannosaurus rex and other big dinosaurs went extinct. It has the name Scansoria because it was a tree climber. Like modern possums, it spent a lot of time up in the trees. But here we see these complex teeth associated with the mammals, and other characteristics give away the fact that the mother would have given birth to a much larger young than the embryo typical of a marsupial. So here are the eutherians. These are the more familiar mammals like we have in North America, like moose, polar bears, raccoons. In Africa, we have garanuk, that's a garanuk, zebra, elephants, giraffe. These are all placental mammals or eutherians. The key thing here is that development is far more advanced by birth compared to that of an embryonic marsupial. This woman knows when she's going to give birth, it's going to be a major event in her life. It is a huge thing to give birth to such a large child after a much longer gestation length than would ever happen in the marsupials. And this is typical of all the eutherians. So we have a nine-month gestation. Whales may have a gestation as long as a year. Horses, nine to ten months as well. So a very long development inside the, the mother's womb and a relatively advanced young as soon as it's born. So we have these three groups, the monotremes, which still give birth to eggs rather than to live young, the marsupials with their embryonic birth, and eutherians, placental mammals, that give birth to a much more developed offspring. And it's that mode of reproduction that guides this classification. And it also reveals first our relationships with the reptiles, with eggs, and the transition then to a much more complex form of reproduction and advanced birth.